Hi folks, it's Mark here and I'm up on the Bruce again and today I'm going to be showing you how to use uh, feathers and wedges and uh, the roto hammer here to break some large rocks. Uh, we don't have any big equipment up here right now and we've got some larger size stone that we have to get out of our trail. Uh, so I'm going to be showing you how to do that. So right now I've just got the roto hammer and uh, I'm drilling a pilot hole with a quarter inch drill bit and that's going to allow us to open up those holes uh, eventually to three quarter inch and then we'll be able to use the feathers and wedges in there. So follow along and maybe uh, get some entertainment out of this process. The old fashioned way of breaking rock. So this is a feather and wedge system. Wow. This rock has started out quite quite large and we've broken it down this far and we've got a couple big chunks over here that have come off it and all we are using is this system of it's called feathers and wedges. So you start out with a small uh, masonry bit and work your way up to a three quarter inch hole. Uh, so you need a bit of a specialized tool for that. This is a kind of a small on the small side, just a Bosch roto hammer. And I'm running it off a, just a small Honda generator. So it, work, it works really nice for this. Um, big jackhammer or a uh, backhoe with a rock breaker would be awesome, but uh, not, not up here right now, not in the budget. We'll pay someone for that. So we just need to get this rock out of the way because this is going to be like a short cut trail eventually from we've got a platform over yonder to the left and that's where we have our lunch and meals and then uh, just a little shortcut to the outhouse that I'm setting up as my lunchroom right now um, yeah so once these are in place uh, the idea is that the feathers are on either side of that metal wedge it's all tool steel so it's really hard and as you drive that metal wedge down that the feathers push out and the rock will break. Um, so a key is having your wedges kind of aligned along where you want that rock to break. And just working them down kind of a tap at a time and you'll hear the, you'll hear the sound change. And then eventually you hear a pop. Now the problem, one of the issues up here is that this stone isn't really that hard. So if this was uh, like a quarried, granite or something really hard then it pops it pops so much nicer this kind of splinters off if you're lucky or you know more often than not there's still a sledgehammer involved in the end but at least this gets us close anyway so anyway i'll give it a shot here try to see what happens oh tap tap oh nice you can hear the sound changing a bit Here, just some delicate cracking going on there. Oh my god. I can just see a hairline crack starting to open up along here. Sometimes you can sound out the rock. And we know that's a hollow side now. So it's coming. Just a dull thud over there. Oh, here, here's our crack forming. Oh, okay, so not, not quite what I had in mind. Got a nice crack right through here. This guy over here, he's the outlier. I don't know, I'll probably just remove that. And then maybe work across here, try to get another piece off across here using that existing hole already. So, anyhow, you can see, you can see what we've done here. And uh, 
Those actually from, come from Lee Valley Tools as a kit. And they're not overly expensive. Look at this doll, doll of stone here. Beautiful. There it is. There it is. First time that rock face has been exposed in a millennia. Wouldn't it be nice to find some gold or something down in there? Pay for this whole project. There you go. That's uh, that's how you break rock on the Bruce Peninsula using. Uh, I don't know, $30 kit of three feathers and wedges from Lee Valley. Um, I do have a cordless Milwaukee 18-volt hammer drill, and it's it's good until you get up to the three-quarter inch bit, and then it, it does kind of, it's pretty hard on the tool. I mean, no doubt if you're really gentle, you could, you, you could probably make it last. Um, but... What I usually do, if I don't want to change bits so often, I'll bring the Milwaukee and I'll drill up to a half inch and then I'll switch over to, to this drill for the three quarter inch, but just trying to save the amount of tools I'm packing up here. But there you go. So that's that's like a very manageable piece now. There's, there's my foot. I don't know what that weighs, but manageable for me to, to lift and put into place and then we're just gonna line the trail with it here. So yeah, I'm glad it worked out pretty clean. Doesn't always happen that way, but that was a good one. So there we go, folks. I got it. And a uh, bit of a finesse job there at the end. Just kind of had to lift it straight out. And uh, all the feathers and wedges were going down in there, so I didn't want to lose anything. But interestingly, you can see my you can see my drill channel down through here. I don't know if the camera's picking picking this up, but it's pretty sparkly. So there's got to be some other minerals in there. Maybe that's the maybe that's more the dolomite. Cause I know uh, I know limestone's fairly flat and chalky, so uh, yeah. I gotta say that Bosch, that, was a, that little Bosch roto hammer. There's the number on it. I bought this because I put a I put a shower bathroom down in my basement. We live out in the country, so there's no sewers to hook up to. So you gotta put in a you gotta put in like a barrel that has a pump in it, so that all your toilet water and sink and laundry everything goes down into that they call it a crock that goes down into that crock basin and there's a pump in there and then that pumps it up into your septic system so that that crock is about three feet deep um, so I cut the floor and then I had to I had to basically dig straight down like three feet to fit that crock in so I bought this thing and uh, I'm gonna have it with me. There's a spade. Oh, do I? There's a couple different spade bits. And I actually, I 
actually made a spade bit uh, just by adding another long length in there and just welded it in with some uh, drill rod and I could just like straight down through all the mud and clay and stone and and uh, down home around the escarpment as well in the in the like, southern part of the Niagara escarpment closer to Niagara Falls and there's lots of limestone there too but uh, yeah that little thing has paid for itself so um, I switched up a little bit I'm just drilling three quarter inch holes now I'm not doing any pilot holes or anything smaller and stepping up I'm just doing the full three quarter inch and going, going right down into that so I think I'm almost done you know I'm gonna fill in that those holes with some of the smaller stuff I'm gonna look it over if there's anything that's got a nice face on it and I can I can you know kind of lay lay it along here along the path as long as it's not sharp or anything if it's nice rounded it's got some weathering on it kind of like that one I'll lay it along the edge but but I'm pretty close actually so I knew I was gonna get this project started I didn't know if I was gonna get it finished but, uh, look at this look how sharp that is there this stuff is what flies flies off at you when you're hammering you know those little edges that go chipping so I, you don't see it but for sure I got these guys on I'm not taking any chances I'm just gonna put those back on that would that would certainly ruin this trip it's like oh geez look at that it's like flint napping you know revealing those super sharp little edges oh there goes another one just eye eye destroyers right there anyhow I'm gonna keep going Okay, this is uh, this is the last push, and something tells me this is going to be a tough one. It just it just drilled a little bit different. Um, drilled a bunch of extra holes, maybe to help it fracture. Uh, only took about five minutes to drill all of those. It's pretty easy drilling, really. You just lean on the drill and raise it up every once in a while to clear out the the powder, the drillings. Um, yesterday when my daughter and her boyfriend were doing a bit of this, um, a couple times I got the drill bit jammed, like heavily jammed, and we didn't know if we'd get it out. So I uh, ended up just pouring some water down into the hole and making a slurry. And I guess with all the powder, it was just locking, locking the drill bit into place up against the, the sides of the rock. So maybe they weren't, you know, I don't know, use, user error, but... Uh, good on him for giving it a try and, and uh, you know I try not to hover I kind of show him how to do it and give him a job and then go do something else and you know let him kind of work their way through it for better or for worse but um, yeah that was one of the things they were experiencing but uh, just pouring the water in the hole uh, did the trick you know a couple different times it got us out of a jam I'm not really having that problem today but I've got a bit more experience you know just drilling and whatnot to know the feel of the tool and when it's struggling or starting to bind up but anyhow let's let's give this some taps and see what what happens this will be yeah, sounding about the same still Just a faintest bit of cracking. This one seems the tightest. That's probably where another set of wedges would be. Would be great. Be, might be fracturing along this line. So I'll leave that one.
you can hear that. Anticipation. to get in here and beat this up a little bit with the hammer see if I can get this kind of pie shaped piece out it'll give me a purchase to work the rock bar in there it's definitely cracked no doubt about it but it goes down into the ground you know 16 20 inches this is a tough one for sure. Okay folks, well here's the final reveal. The rocks are gone, we've got some wood chips down, and now we've got a nice pathway through here. Okay, thanks for watching.